Welcome to another episode of Frank Stallone, Who Is This Guy? This is our podcast episode where we just try to figure out who he is. We know we once a month or maybe twice a month, Doug, we just try to figure out Frank Stallone, who is this guy? What makes him tick? Who is he? Doug, how are you doing? I'm good, Ryan. I'm good. I, I'm just wondering, has anything big happened since the last time we spoke? I, I can't, uh, I don't know, anything big in the news? Yeah, I don't know. At the time of this recording, there might be a couple of things that have happened in the United States. Of course, I'm Canadian, so I don't know what goes on beyond my country borders. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. In my American bubble here, I thought our, our news <laughs> was everybody's news. Oh, no, don't be silly. I fall- That's right. There was the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight yesterday. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that, that too. <laughs> what did you think of that? I got so pissed off. I watched the first fight, the opening fight. Netflix was lagging so bad that I, I said, I, I can't sit here and watch TV like this. So I just turned right. it off and went to bed. I heard things. And even before the fight came out, I saw like a script of some. No, type. it didn't follow. Well, it didn't follow that script. It didn't follow the script because no, it says no. that uh, Paul was going to knock out Tyson in the fifth round. It went to the full, they went the distance. That no. fight went the distance. So mm. I thought the the two fights previous to the Tyson Paul fight were, were really legit. They were good fights. The fighters are bloodied. And t- I'd go back, Doug, and watch those fights. They were legit, really yeah. good fights. And there's a part of me like, this is what boxing needs. I think Netflix did a great job of promoting boxing as a sport. I got excited seeing fighters. I didn't even know who they were. And watching them fight and do such a great job, it was really cool. The female match was amazing, amazing fight. They were amazing fighters. Their punches were legit. Then the Tyson-Paul fight. I think it was what it only could have been. It went the distance. There was no loser. I think Paul could have hurt him more. I think it was too respectful of Tyson. Tyson looked his age. And there's no shame that he's 58 right. years old. I, I wish and hope I can be strong in any kind of shape. Of course, it reminded me of Rocky Balboa, the sixth film. Yeah, I mean, Tyson, just, he's, he's too old. Time is undefeated, Doug. Uh, Paul bowed his head to Tyson at the end, last 10 seconds, and threw any punches. I think Paul held back. He's what, 27 years 27. old? 27. If you believe the Rocky lore, they say the last thing to go is your punch. And I'm sure Tyson can put his fist right through a brick wall. He he, I'm not a boxing expert. He couldn't get to Paul. His legs were so... Yeah. Yeah, his legs are gone. His legs are gone. He couldn't get to Paul. He couldn't do anything. He just did a lot of defense. That was stupid you know. of him to even take that fight. Yeah, I know. It kind of hurt his legacy a little bit. But hey, money's money. Look, I'm not even begrudging that. I, I would take five million dollars just to get punched by Paul myself. So here we go, folks. Frank Stone, who's this guy? Yeah, a lot has happened. If you're ready to go, Doug, I think we should officially start the show. Any of you people out there that find humor in this, you're really a sick, vapid person you got no soul do you think it's funny this is a sick society this has gone beyond the pale you people should be ashamed of yourself There's going to be some talk of politics because, as we all know, Frank Sloan is a Republican and he was pro Trump. I actually want to apologize to anyone who is a Democrat that listens to our show because we actually said when we did our emergency episode, if you recall, Doug, I actually said maybe we shouldn't release this episode and promote Frank and his support of Trump because by doing so, we might have turned the tide for the American population. I think our episode, forget Beyonce, forget Eminem, I think our podcast you know, us showcasing we weren't supporting trump necessarily but we were showcasing frank's support of trump i think our release uh, turned the tie what are your thoughts on that release of that emergency episode well in the interview that he did he had such succinct and poignant points that i mean i, I don't see how frank himself couldn't sway the tide one way or another but us showcasing that even more so from our tens of listeners that we have yeah, i know so we want to uh, apologize to the uh, Harris campaign for <laughs> upsetting the course of history. Yeah, that was never our intention. We just report the news, and Frank has given us news. So that in mind, I just want to, uh, to all the uh, Democrats out there who are listening to this episode, trigger warning, there's a lot of gloating, <laughs> a lot of gloating done by Frank. So if you don't want to listen to that, I can understand. But it's not all politics. So stick around, folks. I think the first half of this, you'll be you'll, you'll enjoy the show. It's, it's pretty much politics free there's a lot of fun stuff to discover today so don't leave us if you're if you're sick of the politics okay here we go good morning everybody it's frank well this is my first day back at the gym since 
like April or May. And of course, then I had my back surgery and I couldn't train for a while, but it feels really good to get up early in the morning, have a routine and, you know, and Alex and I trained today. Not heavy, smart. And if Doug, Frank's back at the gym. That's great. He's invigorated. He, he has energy. He has something to smile about. He's a new man. He looks like a different person right now. Yeah. He, well, yeah, he looks fresh. His hair looks fresh. Now you'd notice he's wearing a, he's wearing a Greyhound jacket. <laughs> why? <laughs> well, I don't know why. I admire Frank's swag. The swag that he gets is amazing. All right. He gets all these shirts for different companies and people send him stuff. Look, if I did the show for a hundred years, I would never have guessed he would ever wear Greyhound swag. Yeah. He's hawking for Greyhound now. Like, is this, are they paying him for this endorsement? This is, his Ford Bronco must be in the garage. I'm not sure. I guess so. feels great. And I feel like I'm back in the driver's seat. Ah. Like, remember this? He's back in the driver's seat. And then he turns around as, and shows his jacket, which, which <laughs> says, go Greyhound, leave the driving to us. So he just mentions that he's so happy to be back in his own personal driving seat as a person. But then he advertises a company that does the driving for you. <laughs> but why? Is Greyhound really looking for sponsorships? You could argue Greyhound is the D-list celebrity of transportation. <laughs> so- yeah. Or does he believe in Greyhound so much? He took it upon himself to go to the, the Greyhound merch store, buy the jacket. Now he's doing it free of charge so, because he's just... It is so old. odd. Or does he have a stake in Greyhound? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, speaking of stakes, quick update here. So you have the Frank's bourbon, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, to anyone who's still listening to this show, we're going to have a uh, Frank Bourbon tasting episode after all. You're very lucky, too, because recently I've had a hankering for some bourbon, and that's my only bottle as of now, and I haven't cracked it. Oh, so, you know, okay, gonna... great. A listener of our show and or one of the hosts, I don't know if he listens to our show, but he's definitely one of the hosts of the Last of the Action Heroes podcast network, Jack from the Drunk Bond podcast. He actually asked for my address because he's sending me a gift. I believe he's sending me his bottle of Frank's. Wow. How yeah. generous. What, what a generous guy Jack is. That that never once entered my mind. <laughs> yeah, thanks, you <laughs> jerk. <laughs> Send it to you. I, I wanted it all to myself. You know I, how many bottles are being held by listeners and or friends right now? Well, Katie you. has one, right? I have one. Oh, sorry. I was thinking about, <laughs> I thought you were talking about how many bottles has Frank's bourbon not given no. out. <laughs> oh, no, no. How many are actually like in hand? I think there's a handful. So if you're listening to this episode and you want to be a part of that, again, part of that drinking episode, come on and share. Even if you've already drank the bottle, that's fine. Or had some I'd like to show the bottle, share your thoughts, because now it's a dead company. We're toasting mm-hmm. to a dead company. Frank's bourbon has still taken my money and not delivered my goods, which I believe is theft. <laughs> that is theft yes <laughs> i know the law and that is theft yeah you're a police officer right doug so has been said yes so if i walked into a an alcohol store and took a bottle without paying for it that's theft right that is now if i walked into the same liquor store and they just took money out of my wallet and kicked me out of the store would they be robbing me <laughs> that would also be theft i am the second scenario i have been robbed by uncle frank's bourbon you, you paid for a service or an item that you didn't receive that is yes that is theft and they lock the doors, and I'm knocking and banging the door, and nobody's answering. They're just counting no, my money. They, they lock the doors, turn off the lights. They're peeking through the blinds at you. <laughs> hey, when will this creep leave? Greyhound buses leave the driving to us. Well, I'm leaving the driving to me. Oh, there you go. Re- oh, there he he had that ready. Mm-hmm. He had that ready. He's like, I'm leaving the driving to me. So he planned that little bit, you know, before he left the house. He said, I'm going to do my Greyhound pitch today. Let me grab the Greyhound jacket out of the closet. Yeah, I'll wear it to the gym, it. and then we'll do our Greyhound thing. And Alex is holding the camera just a chuckling, just a chuckling. I, you know, I, I asked you months ago for mm. Alex's um, contact info because I wanted to reach out to Alex saying that I'm interested in uh, getting into the celebrity personal yeah. training racket, you know, and, and ask him for some advice and see what he says. Now that I'm an official part of the show, I might actually have to follow up on that. That'd be fantastic. We should get him on the show. I wonder if we can get him on the show. I know we could if he doesn't watch our show. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know. You don't want to cause a wedge. Yeah, I don't want to. Alex. Yeah. The recovery. And uh, I can't be more thankful. It's good to be alive. Take care. God bless. 
Oh, God bless you. God bless you, Frank. It is good to be alive. I agree. Next video we've got here is, this is an older video. This is Frank Sloan in the ring, and he's shadow boxing. He's showing some moves here. I've muted the video, Doug, just because there was some music playing that I don't want to be hit on our oh, yeah. YouTube, you know, our big YouTube channel. He's doing shadow boxing. He did say this was when he was in his 60s. So he's just, a. if you think about it, he's about probably no more than 10 years, probably seven years to eight years older than Tyson is now. I saw that video on his page and I, I watched it. Stupid me. I thought he was doing that in the gym. Like now I thought I was like, his hair is like darker. Did he dye his hair? But that hair piece was a little bit darker. Yeah. yeah I didn't, uh, I didn't read the, uh, his blurb here. Well, you have to read the blurbs. There's context. Yeah, to his videos, I, know, Doug. I know. So this is what he had to say. He goes shadow boxing is a lost art. He doesn't say shadow boxing is a lost art. Sorry. Shadow boxing, a lost art. <laughs> no comma, just shadow boxing, a lost art. You're right. I apologize. I, I do. No, you read, have to read it grammar gr grammatically correct. Well, I know I'm reading it as it should be written. I, I don't know if yeah. I read it the way Frank wrote it, our listeners would, might uh, turn off our show. We can't have that. You know, it's funny. I probably auto correct it, Doug. I'm just reading it. And yeah. Then I <laughs> yeah. In your mind. He goes on to say, um, okay. So before punch mitts, we would shadow in front of another fighter practicing, keeping my, see, you're right. Practicing, keeping, you shouldn't say that. You should right. say, I practice keeping my hand up and throwing and trying different combinations. It was one of the first things to start your workout. I don't know what he's saying. It's one of the first things to start your workout. I should say, it, this should be one of the first things you start practicing, your workout keeping with. my right hand up, not even hand, my right hand up and throwing and trying oh. different combinations. <laughs> Oh, my God. People are like, what are you guys saying? Okay, now I'm going to read it like he talks. Fine. <laughs> Practicing keeping my right hand up and throwing and trying different combinations. Period. It was one of the first things to start your workout. Period. No. My best punch was my left hook. Period. This was a few years ago in my 60s at Fortune's Gym and Best Boxing Gym in LA. Whew. Okay. We got now, through it. I got through it. Now, the reason why I wanted to share that because we had a comment here was kind of fun. It wasn't even that write-up that was fun. That write-up was just to indicate, Doug, that he, this is a video from 10 years ago. Buddy from Focus Center Fitness wrote, Hey, man, you have two hands, so keep the left hand up as well, especially after those hooks, amigo. So he's just giving friendly advice, but Frank had to respond. He said, at Focus Center Fitness, usually after I land the left hook, solid, it's over anyway. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> so I might as well not practice keeping that up. Oh. I love it. He's like, it's over. Like I knock oh. him out with one punch, Frank. You know, oh, I At love least it. He threw the LOL in, so we know we're not yeah. taking him too seriously there. Yeah, but he still has to say it though. Of course, it's, it's his way of saying that he isn't practicing properly. He got called out on it, but he's like, yeah, yeah. But when I punch, it's over. I would say it's a humble brag, but it's like an outright brag. It's not even right. humble. There's no humility there. I'm going to be selling off a lot of my guitars. I probably have 45, 50 guitars. I don't need 50 guitars. All right. So what we heard there, folks, is Frank is selling. <laughs> he's selling his 40 to 50 guitars. Did you know about that, Doug? Yeah, because before last recording, when I went back through his Instagram, I saw a lot of these guitar sales. So our listeners know if they're not watching this on our YouTube channel, he's got this imagery of different guitars and the caption is stage used comes with a certificate of authenticity. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Each guitar is certified. Who is authenticating that this was stage used? You get what I'm saying? So it comes with yeah. a certificate, Doug, that says this guitar was played on stage. But who is the witness? More importantly, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody is gonna hang a guitar on the wall and say this is stage used by frank stallone who cares sell them back to guitar center frank you'll get 50 bucks for it and call it a day oh uh, you know what's funny if i had money like well if i was a multi-millionaire maybe or actually let's say a billionaire so i had literally money to burn and i love a good joke i would buy one of these for sure and just show people but that's the thing it'd be a gag i'm buying it as a gag doug not serious frank's selling these seriously mm -hmm. okay i would buy it as a gag it would be an interesting experiment though for everybody that comes over your house they walk past it and to either be like why the hell do you have this or that's moderately cool. There's nobody that's going to be blown away. Be like, whoa, you have an authentic Frank Stallone guitar. Nobody. 
Well, that's just it. It's a gag gift. What do you buy your millionaire friends? If we were both millionaires, so like we both had money to burn type thing, I would buy this for you as a mm-hmm. gag gift. This is right, what you buy yeah, yeah. rich people. This is I would yeah. send this to your house for Christmas, and you would love it. Yeah. But as a as a gag, the insidest of inside jokes. Yes. Uh, anyways, he's selling them seriously, like he's Eddie Van Hill. <laughs> it's like oh, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody God. cares that you play guitar or you're selling them. But I I love the authentic certification. Like, there's some sort of like group of people that verify used guitars on stage. Oh yes, that truly was used on the show. I believe the show was Atlantic City 2020. What? If you could sell these for fifty dollars a piece back to Guitar Center as like a used <laughs> guitar, like he's got fifty guitars at fifty bucks each. That's like a thousand dollars, Frank. He's got like thirty acoustic <laughs> guitars next to him in this picture, <laughs> and they all look the same. They all look like they're bought at Costco. Yeah. Uh, and I hope you enjoy playing them like I have over the many, many years. So there you go. If you want to buy a guitar, folks, let me help Frank out here. There are many guitars are available for purchase. For details, you have to email. <laughs> you don't even get to look at a store. You have to email gaspare at franksloanguitars.com. I think that's Gaspar is a like a Last Spanish name. name. Yeah, Gaspar. Like a, well, it might be Gaspar. Gaspar E, like Gaspar Eric, sure. you know, at Frank, whatever. Who cares? Nobody's emailing. It's not a website. You're emailing some yeah. guy who's in charge of Frank's merchandise or something. I, I, we I, should email. We should just say, hey, I'm just curious. Um, for curiosity's sake, can you send me a picture and a price of your most expensive guitar? I really enjoy Frank Stallone, but I can't even do that. I don't even want to get their hopes up that I'm interested. <laughs> 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 you also don't want to get email bombed either. They're gonna say you're still interested. You're still interested. You're still yeah, interested. Yeah, exactly. For uh, months and months. It's like answering the door to the Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll keep coming back no matter how much you ignore right. them. Okay, so what we're hearing and watching here, folks, is now we have an updated. This is a recent. This is now Frank Sloan shadow boxing today or last in, within the last month. And of course, Alex, you'll hear his voice behind the camera cheering on Frank Sloan in the shadow boxing. Hey, come back, yeah, Frank. Come back. Alex says it's a comeback, Frank. 76 year old Frank is he's come back. He's in the ring again, Doug. Yeah, I would be embarrassed to do this in front of people. <laughs> Just putting that out there. How dare you? Come on. This is amazing. Look at those punch. Aren't you afraid to get hit by one of those? He looks old. Even his movement. Did any he looks like he joined a CKO kickboxing school and does it on the, the 6 a.m. class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday or something. Like he's he doesn't look like he ever did any boxing. He looks old and his movements are erratic. Look, I don't box, but I could imitate exactly what he's doing right now. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. It just looks like you're doing your dance on your feet back and forth and throwing punches and and you're dodging an in in invisible opponent type stuff. He's going to plug his swag, though. We got to get that in. Okay, so he does the bip, bip, bip. <laughs> Was that the knockout punch, Frank? The uppercut that you just threw to, to the air? But he's sort of serious, Doug. Again... If he leaned into it that he's being goofy and silly, this wouldn't be a fun show. But he's semi like he's seriously trying to show us the Instagram followers that he still mm-hmm. kind of has it or that he at least had it. And this is just the geriatric version of what he used to be. You know what they teach in boxing too is he, he's like short arming everything. Like you should extend because you're trying to punch through your target. And he's right. just like, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, a little short arm <laughs> T-Rex arm punches. Like, come on, Frank, you should know all this. Okay, now he's going to plug his swag, which like it's kind of hard to hear what he's plugging. It's a boxer. Oh, oh yeah, he's plugging that. Right. It's a, a boxer from the past who happens to be another greatest of all time. I don't know. We should have made a list of all the boxers that are the greatest mm-hmm. of all time. It's Jim. Harry Griff, greatest fighter to ever live. Thank you. Okay. So now we have a picture, so I have to describe the picture. So I think it's the same day because he's wearing the same shirt. Oh, he's yeah. with actor Frank Grillo. Are you watching Tulsa King? I haven't watched the second season yet. Oh, it's fantastic. I know. I want, I want to get I canceled uh, Paramount Plus after the last season because I didn't watch anything on it. But the uh, Oh, you Tulsa don't watch King. like Yellowstone or anything? 
I that's isn't that on Peacock? No, it's Paramount Plus. Oh, I don't know. I don't. It's a Peacock is a U.S. service, but it's on yeah, Paramount oh, okay. Plus. Too. Yeah, I don't think so because that's NBC. So I know Paramount Plus owns and runs that show. Yeah, or maybe the the newer seasons because that was on TV. Yellowstone. Well, they did a edited version for TV. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so uh, Frank Grillo, great actor, and he's an older gentleman too, in phenomenal shape. Like I think he's nearing sixty, if you can believe it. I uh, love Frank Grillo. He's yeah. legit. He's legit. He's a great actor, and he's really great in in the Tulsa King. See, yeah. everyone thinks we're just slagging on Frank. I think it's great that he's friends with Frank and uh, Frank and Frank. I should say Frank Stallone <laughs> is friends with Frank Grillo. One of our listeners, the co-host of my uh, show, the One More Round podcast, Katie, she adores Frank Grillo. Thinks he's uh, quite handsome. Grillo says here, "Great seeing you, Pison." To uh, Frank Stallone, there. So interesting. Frank- Grillo's acknowledging his uh, friendship with Frank. Well, they've had a picture before, and but Sly was in it. I would just say this. Frank Grillo is probably kind of Frank Sloan because he's in it big with the boss man, Sly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's keeping the peace with the brothers. You know, he's not going to. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, as well, he should. Like Sly Stallone has done a lot for Frank Grillo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what we're uh, seeing here, folks, is uh, this is pre-election day. But we're nearing up to the timeline here that Election Day is happening for in Frank's life. And he's received shipment. Now, what has he received shipment, folks? Well, he's received coffee cups. What do you call these Keurig-type cups? K-Pods. K-Pods, thank you. I'm a grinder myself, so I don't use these type of things very often. Well, (laughs) la-di-da. Anyways, so on the cups is Trump's face with the symbol or the acronym MEGA, Make America... Guava again? Guava? Guava? Oh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. All right. So, anyways, we're going to hear Frank's uh, announcement or feelings on receiving the shipment of coffee cups with Trump's face on it. Look what my friends from Peacemaker Coffee sent me. American coffee owned by veterans in Akron, Ohio. This is fantastic. It's almost like a collector's item. Thank you, guys. God bless. Semper Fi. Go Trump. I love how if you just slap Trump's face onto some inanimate object, it becomes a collector's item. I bet he has a, a Trump shrine, a Trump room that's got all like Trump swag in it. I mean, that box has what? About 50 cups in it? It looks like it had at box. least 100. Probably 100. 100. So, you know, he's he, he can put one or two up on a shelf. Oh, for sure. <laughs> if you want now, I want Doug and I'll pay you if you could order me some of those. If and when I ever come down to the States to mm-hmm. see the sights of Philly, uh, you can hand me over some of those cups. I need to get my hand on those uh, collector item. Uh, yeah, cups. I got to go back in uh, in the video and, and see where I got. Well, them. don't worry. I've taken care of that. I had to do some research. I wanted to look up this company. I want to see who are the people that make America Guava again. So I looked up this company and they're a real company and the boss man himself has his own TikTok. So I know we're kind of tangent here, but this is the world of Frank. We're trying to figure out who Frank Sloan is, who he touches base with and who he connects with. So here we go. Here is, I believe this guy refers to himself as the coffee king or the coffee boss. It's a self moniker. He's given himself. So here we go. Peacemakercoffee.com. Here's her TikTok. There's two of them. I want you to watch this first video and you tell me if it's viral or not. According he to came to the right place if he wants to go viral. That's true peacemakercoffee.com coffee boss here i've been hearing a lot of people complain about left lane drivers now here in the area where i live we have a lot of left lane drivers and what i mean by a left lift lane drivers or left i'm confused is he he's talking saying left <laughs> is he I'm saying sure. left? well his intention is to say left he's got a little uh drawl going but what do you call himself looking the coffee king coffee boss uh, why do i have the feeling he's not talking about left lane drivers actual drivers okay he tries to be clever about everyday things in life that could be irritating or whatever it might be and he'll segue into how his coffee can overcome those things that's the gist of these tiktok yeah doug's shaking his head and rolling his eyes yeah. you might be surprised by the comedic genius and uh, messaging here this is great so he's talking about lift lift lane drivers i hate lift lane drivers they're even worse than left lane drivers <laughs> lane driver is somebody who goes slow in the left lane while the rest of society is trying to get to work or they're trying to get to somewhere they need to be right but i formed a profile i've used my powers of observation usually these left lane drivers these left lane types they have a kamala harris bumper sticker they have a ukraine 
bumper sticker, and they're they're in their car listening to some Taylor Swift. <laughs> there, you got it, Doug. You got it. <laughs> he made the connection with left lane drivers with left leaning people. You can't hear the word left and right anymore and not think there's some innuendo there. You left wing liberal. <laughs> like all politics aside, I hate left lane drivers. <laughs> Honestly, you park in the left lane and go 65 that annoys the shit out of me your team coffee boss on this are you? <laughs> just for the driving aspect I'll, I'll oh okay that. just, but talk about alienating maybe half of your yeah uh, he's not marketing to everybody he's really uh, no yeah he's no. Uh, got a niche audience here say i'm surprised he actually sells dark roast <laughs> oh jeez all hope is not lost. I am here to help. I can help you all out. Now, I can't do nothing about that Kamala Harris bumper sticker. I can't do anything about that Ukrainian flag you have on your car. And I definitely can't do anything about your horrific taste in music. But I can fix your taste in coffee and maybe give you some energy so you get on down the road a little faster. Go on over to PeacemakerCoffee.com and get yourself some of the Rookie. This is amazing right here. By drinking his coffee... I drive faster in the right lane. Or is he saying that you, you as the other driver can tolerate more? He said, I can go faster. I can get down the lane quicker. See, what I don't understand is I can pass someone in the left lane legally. Yes. That's the legal passing lane, Mm -hmm. but I've been driving since I was 16 years old. I'm now 49. So my 33 years of driving, I've passed people in the right lane, not really trying to just naturally can happen but i didn't drink peacemaker coffee to do that it just happened naturally so i don't i also get the feeling that this isn't artisan coffee it's probably tastes like you know that oh day old shit it, that's it's your 7-eleven coffee at the, yeah 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 exactly and this will give you some energy and maybe you'll get on down the road a little faster you'll at least do the speed limit and you'll hang out in the right lane He's pitching this to the left lane drivers. The oh, is that Kamala what he, oh, You know what? I've watched this commercial three times, and for some reason, I thought he was talking. See, because he he alienated the lift leaning people. So I thought, <laughs> I thought he was talking to me to the other side of the aisle type people, saying, mm-hmm. "Hey, to get through the day because of these lift leaning people." Drink my coffee, but he said, No, no he's saying he's... give the coffee to yes. those people. Yeah, you might be a liberal, but you drink my coffee, you'll, you're gonna smarten up and drive in the oh. right lane or go fast in the left lane. All right, coffee boss, I got you, I got yeah. you, brother. It took us a while, and to who get knows? There, but... Maybe you'll listen to some ACDC, some Led Zeppelin, or some Motley Crue, or something good. You know what bugs me is I enjoy those bands, and I hate that he does too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we also listen to Taylor Swift in our home. So you can do both, folks. You can have both worlds. They don't have to be Imagine separated. that. Imagine, Imagine that. that. You can appreciate both sides of the music aisle. All right. Coffee boss. I'm out. Coffee boss. And he salutes. Now you get the gist of what he's doing here. Let's see how he does another. And I got a feeling, Doug, we might hear more from the coffee boss in future episodes. Just so you know. I, I like it. I like okay. it. Coffee.com. Coffee boss here. How many times have I gotten in somebody's vehicle and they have like a quarter tank of gas or less? How many times have I had to use somebody's phone or someone show me something on their phone and they have like 10% battery left? Okay, this is really stretching it. Now, are you following what he's saying here? He's yeah. saying, I've gone into someone's vehicle. They're giving me a ride to a party, a sporting event, whatever it is. And he has noted what's left in their tank. He's made mm-hmm. note of it. Now, the next one's even worse. Someone is showing him a video or a photo on their phone, and the battery only has 10% left. And this is an issue for him. Have you ever had these issues in your life? Never made note of it. I've never given a crap. If I handed you my phone, say, hey, check out this Instagram reel, and you're like, look at the reel, but your eye goes up to the right a little bit. Oh, crap. Ryan's only got 10% on his battery here. This is concerning. <laughs> it's concerning. Yeah, no, that would never that would never enter my mind. Well, it's entered the coffee boss's mind. Let's continue. I suppose. Here's the deal. Competence, people. You want to make sure you have a full tank of gas, because if you don't have a full tank of gas, like what good are you? You like can't go anywhere <laughs> to a gas station, maybe. Yeah, so the moment you leave a gas station, the moment you leave, it's no longer full. Right. So do you just keep going around and circle? No, I'm, I'm incompetent. <laughs> I'm incompetent. If I leave the gas station, my tank is no longer full. I am incompetent. Okay. Yeah. So he's saying 
your tank must always be full. I guess you just never know when you might just keep driving. My wife, she starts panicking if her car gets below half a tank. So she always has to have it pretty full. Well, she's only 23 years old. Bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I drive it until the, I start smelling fumes before I think to f- fill it up. I know how far I can go on my car before I need to worry about it. You, coffee boss, have no say in that. Okay. And if something happens, if your loved ones need you to do something, you can't do anything. You're a fool. Okay. Whoa. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Now he's alienating everyone who doesn't have a fully charged battery or a full tank of gas. We're now incompetent and fools. Yeah. If he had anybody on the hook before, now we're we're all gone. (laughs) I can't tell you how many times people have been impressed when they've gotten inside my vehicles and they've said, hey. We know that you always have a full tank of gas. Well, because I'm prepared. He says he doesn't know how many times that's happened. I can tell exactly, Coffee Boss, how many times someone's been impressed with your full tank of gas. Zero. The number yeah. is zero. No one's ever verbalized ever in their life. You know what? That's pretty impressive, man. You got a full tank of gas. I like that. I like that about a person. I'm a commuter. I drive an hour to and from work every day. I would have to fill up my tank every single day to continuously have a full tank of gas. Yes. That's ridiculous. Well, the coffee boss says you're incompetent otherwise, Doug. And and I'm a fool. And you're a fool. And if you were to check my phone, I usually have, I'm usually like over 80% or something because I'm prepared. What are you prepared for? You're like, what are you worried about? He's prepared for the grid to go down. He's doomsday prepping by having 80%. I think so. Go to peacemakercoffee.com. Go get yourself some wonderful coffee because I don't want to end up at your house and you don't have coffee or you have Folgers. No. Don't worry, you're never coming to my house. <laughs> That's a promise I can make to you, Coffee Boss. You're never coming to my house. Folgers is probably gourmet compared to this garbage. How dare you? This is Peacemaker Coffee. Don't be smirching Peace. America's coffee ever again. <laughs> PeacemakerCoffee.com. Go get yourself some good coffee. I'll catch you all later. All right. I hope people enjoyed our uh, PeacemakerCoffee.com sponsor. We'll definitely showcase yeah. it again on a future episode. I think keep tabs on that guy. He's gold. So I just wanted to show this picture here. <laughs> oh my god I thought Frank that was Slo- a girl <laughs> <laughs> Frank Sloan is with two people one of them looks like a 1980s wrestler wearing clothes you know you know <laughs> yeah. he could be like a, a big boss man's cousin or something character yeah. big Fu and, Manchu <laughs> and he's got a big Fu Manchu he's a big man like he's towering over Frank and then he's got this this guy looks like he was a, a hairband rock star from 1985. Yeah, bless his heart. He was probably big in the 80s, and his hair is still big to this day. Look at that hair. Do you, yeah, now, really is that hair real? So Who he, is that? Well, okay, great question. I love that you're asking. Here's what Frank said. He goes, the three amigos. Now, the names are Chris Kiska and Patrick Riley. Okay, Chris Kiska, that's not a very common name. Oh, no. Do I see a Ryan Rebalkin comment there? <laughs> yes, yeah, we're getting to that. Just wait, this, this way, there's too much of this picture. You got to tease our audio listeners here for a second. I googled the names Chris Kuska and Patrick Riley because Frank hashtags the band Iron Butterfly. So I'm like, oh, oh they probably play for Iron Butterfly, right? Because Iron Butterfly over the last you know 60 years or whatever has had they're one of those bands like Foreigner, like no one's in the original band anymore, but they just keep playing those songs. Um, in a Gata de Vida. Yeah, that's like a 17-minute Iron Butterfly song. That's a great Mm -hmm. song. Okay. Now, those names, Doug, do not show up on Wikipedia. And I Googled their names with Iron Butterfly. Nothing came up. So, And even this Chris Kiska guy has no online presence, like none in that spelling anyways. He might have spelt it wrong, Frank. I'm not sure. What about looking up the Iron Butterfly wiki? These guys are not there. So I'm confused. Yeah. I did comment on this picture because i saw one of the top comments was from darren powell 8220 he asks a question unrelated to this photo he just asks the question he says hey frank do you have any kids which i thought was such an odd question out of the blue like frank do you have any kids the replies are hidden i can't see them Mm -hmm. so i don't know who said what in the last four weeks when this was written because it sounds like darren was sounding a little defensive because he goes i was just asking I, I responded, and I thought, well, I'm going to expose myself here. I don't know if Frank's going to see this or get I don't care. But I said, <laughs> I used my name. I said, yeah, he has a son named Robert, and he's been on my podcast. So there you go. So I'm curious why Darren asked the question more than anything. This it's picture is odd. The two people with Frank don't exist on the internet. 
I don't know what their connection is to Iron Butterfly. And then Darren asked Frank if he had any sons, and the and the reply was hidden. So I don't know. Did he on. did Frank tag them? Like they have their own handles, Instagram? No, handles? they're not handled. There's no tags. He just hashtags Iron Butterfly. So freaking bizarre. It is weird. The only thing I can think of is that there's such new members to the band that they're not even listed online. I don't know. We should uh, do some follow-up on this. I took about 20 minutes of my life looking in to try to figure out who they were. <laughs> I'm the research guy. I'll, I'll do a little bit. All right. But what we have here, folks, is we have an advertisement here for the uh, Transformational Healing Universe. This is what Frank posted on his Instagram was this company called Transformational Healing Universe. This is what Frank said. This is the place to go for healing. I strongly recommend it for your healing. Stem wave, pulse bed, hyperbaric chamber, red light bed and more and it gives the address and everything okay that's interesting so i just wanted to check out their site to see who they were how legit they are it turns out that frank has a testimonial on their site really it's so weird there okay we're here with frank stallone can you give us a little history on your shoulder your the, what you've been going yes through? i've had trouble with this right shoulder for years this is a busy recording day He's wearing the same box. Oh, yeah. He is. He had a picture with Frank Grillo. <laughs> he shot a box, and now he's at the clinic. I think this is all on the same day. And sometimes it would rear its ugly head and, and, and really be extremely painful. In the last few years, it was really bothering me. I mean, the thing is where I had to sleep with my arms straight out, and I was crunching. And, you know, when I do archery and I do competitive shooting, like track and stuff, and it was really bothering me. So I came into Harhari, and he said, I want to tell you about the stem wave machine. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there a little, a little skeptical. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Because <laughs> I was ready, honest to God, over Curl and Job, I was ready to have shoulder surgery. But I just didn't want to be kind of out for six weeks and then all the rehab with it. Yeah. Can you true. give us the Cliff Notes version, Frank? Oh, no. No, no. Oh, Jesus. He just I know. groans on and on and on. <laughs> he's got an audience. He's got a camera. Like he's always a star. He's always oh. ready to perform. Now, what he's referring to, I had tendonitis in my like below the shoulder in the front part of the arm here. I believe what he's referring to is electric shock machine, like a cattle prod, and they put it on your arm. It, it sends oh. electric shocks to your arm. It hurts. Yeah. It feels like someone's inside your arm, punching mm. your arm like this, like boom, 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 boom. Do you ever get the stim pads, the electrical? Yeah, I had those before, but this is way more effective. It's yeah, way that's what I thought he was talking about. I was like, it's, muscle stim has been around for ages. Every one of these clinics has this machine. They're making it sound like this is some miracle machine this clinic has. And he says, why don't you give this a shot? So I came in, and we did a series of these stem wave. It bangs you a little bit. He's right. Mm -hmm. Frank's not lying here. And it does work, by the way. It works, yes. What's what's the level? What's this? What's this? And all of a sudden, it started like after like four or five sessions. I didn't feel the actual. It's not painful, but you just feel it's just the intensity. Of, Frank and I are on the same page. It's, it's hard to explain. It hurts. But once it's done, it's done. It's hard to explain. It's intense. Yes, it's uncomfortable. It's extremely uncomfortable. But you don't pull away. It's weird. Right. Yeah. The intensity. Yeah. Of it. yeah. And I just told him, and I haven't been here since my back surgery, probably five months. And I said, I have not had one incident with my shoulder, not one. And I was here. And I bought these things, you know, with these suspend your shoulder and stuff. So just recently, a little bit, just a little bit mm -hmm. of the old stuff, but not like a, it was chronic. Mm -hmm. and, and seriously, I was two days away from getting the surgery. surgery. That's, so, that's there's something amazing. I love it. That's <laughs> Frank wasn't quite done his story. And the guy's like, okay, okay. Hey, people, yeah. Great story, great it. story. Wrap yeah, it up. Yeah. You give him a wrap it up, though. He gave him a wrap him up. I don't it's think fun. Frank was quite done because he, he was about to say he was just a couple days away from getting surgery. He should have just said, hey, I was two days away from actually having surgery, which is invasive and it's a lot of recovery. I use this machine, which is not surgery. And mm -hmm. five sessions later, I'm good to go. There. That yeah, took me 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and they kind of Frank was like, I had so much stuff to say. <laughs> yeah, he had a lot more to say. So oh. He's hawking for another company now. Well, he's wearing like a Tommy Hilfiger jacket with Porsche and Shell. He looks like he's about to race the F1 formula race here. Yeah, I think that's Ferrari. Is that Ferrari? Tell us, Frank, what are you wearing? But he's wearing Shell and Tommy Hilfiger, and which again, it looks like a F1 type jacket. Like, is he mm. at the tracks? 
He's playing dress up again. No, we know he's playing dress. Up. <laughs> yeah. Well, folks, it's less than two weeks to the election. You've had four years to think about it. Do not think with your emotion. Don't think because Beyonce and Bruce Springsteen are playing, they're not running the country, okay? Just think logically. Think from 2016 to 2020 how it was, and think about how 2020 to now is. You have to be rational. Crime is rampant, prices are up, and I believe Donald Trump is going to prevail, and we are gonna have a better life. A country is like a business. You cannot think with emotion. It's like in a boxing match. If you get too emotional, you're going to get knocked out. You got to be. A couple things. Uh, no offense, Frank, but I love how he says Bruce can't have an opinion. Beyonce can't mm-hmm. have an opinion. But Frank Sloan can have an opinion. Right. I was thinking that exact same thing. In his own mind, he's a celebrity. And he's endorsing Trump. So don't listen to these celebrities, but listen to the right wing celebrities like myself and Chris yeah. Rock, <laughs> Ted Nugent. Yeah, listen to us. Is Chris Rock Republican? Um, I believe so. Am I wrong about that? No, I don't know. I actually didn't know where he le- leaned. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kid Rock. Kid Rock. No, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Cut that part out. No way, man. Kid, Kid Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. That'd be an awesome rock and roll comedy tour. The Rock <laughs> Tour. <laughs> the Rock Brothers. <laughs> I, well, I know Trump does have black supporters, and I, I would have just found it surprising that Chris Rock, being the level that he is, would have been open about this. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. yeah. Forget my dumb ass. Do you hear that Kid Rock and Nickelback are going on tour? Are they? Yeah. Oh, boy. That should be good. That actually might be one of the worst byproducts of Trump's administration. Yeah. <laughs> Kid Rock, Nickelback tour. <laughs> Again, Frank's telling us, I love it. Don't listen to those people. Don't have any feelings. Be a robot when it comes to voting. Like, that's impossible. People have very strong feelings of politics. Just like Frank has feelings about these things. I love it. But not, it's not necessarily you should listen not just celebrities but don't listen to anybody to say vote for this person because i'm voting for them exactly exactly it's calm solid you've got to get out and vote this could be the most important election of your life because the he had no idea where he was going (laughs) no no this might be the most important election of your life because (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's trying to come up with something. He was better prepared with the Greyhound jacket yeah. bit than he is about politics. <laughs> yeah. Let's see where he goes. Residue, the residual effects of this could last for 20 years if she gets in. She- don't worry, Frank. You're not going to be live in 20 years. You don't have to worry about what happens. She doesn't know what she's doing. She has no plan. She's She's so unqualified for this job. Think with your mind, not your heart. Vote however you want. But I- well, you just told us who to vote for. Now I get to vote for whoever <laughs> I want. Which one is it? Right. You just shit talked her into the ground. And now you're saying vote for whoever you want. I say Trump Vance is the ticket. God bless you. And may God look down on He's getting so weirdly religious lately. It's weird. Yeah. He should have had a take two for that video. That was too much garbled crap. I just have questions about the outfit. Uh, that's my biggest question. Why are you yeah, wearing? He doesn't even F1 address jacket? that. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. He's wearing an F one type racing jacket, but there's no explanation. Is there a celebrity race that he was a part of? Or Who knows? He's, you, you know, ask uh, him is probably a, a movie part that he's oh maybe for maybe he's going to be in that new Brad Pitt F one film. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm, he's his pit boss. <laughs> pit boss, good one. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to show this. But this is a picture here. Look at his collar t-shirt. What do you see on the what do you see on his collar there? It looks like specs or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now remember Dom it's a and I have snowy pointed, there in LA. Yeah, remember Dom and I pointed out in past episodes about his, the dangers that we've caught oh, on. Yeah. This, this yeah, is where like, I think Frank listens to our show. Because look what he says here. He's talking about the Yankees and, and the LA team World Series at the time. And he says here, No, I don't have dandruff. These corduroy shirts collect lint. Oh my god, that's funny. Now, do you think he's heard those comments? Oh, he he must have. You know what, okay. though? He, he would never directly address you or no. this show or anybody uh, ragging on him. No, we're not ragging on him. We're just trying to figure out who he is. Oh, you're taking the piss out, as you Canadians say. The Mick. Whatever. Who <laughs> says the piss? Is that a British thing? I think it's American. It might be. No, the, a no British we don't say the taking the piss out. 
Well, it might be. We say we're breaking his balls. Yeah, we're breaking your balls, Frank. Hey, oh, hey, you're Italian. You're always busting the balls, <laughs> Italians. You know, maybe he's never listened to our show. Maybe other people pointed out his his. Uh, but that's not lint. That's white specks. Lint does not look like that. That's all I'm trying to say. Like you probably saw some cat hair. You have to say, he, but what he has on that collar, lint does not come in the size of a salt pepper shaker white. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, no. And there's a video coming up. I think it showcases more, a more quote unquote lint. I'll show you before you shoot, yeah. shoot your video. Take a lint roller to the shirt. Yeah, right. If it's just lint, lint doesn't collect from your day to day walking around. You're right. That's the thing. That's right. So you should lint roll yourself before you go out in public. And then you're yeah. you're fine for the day. Right. Yeah. So this one here is just this is kind of interesting. He's just filming an old building, talks about the history of it. But later in the video, he's outside amongst the, the public who are like street vendors and stuff. First, it's a historic walkthrough, which is great. And then he kind of makes a funny little comment. I guess it's sort of projecting his inner thoughts. You tell me if I'm crazy. The old buildings in downtown Los Angeles, probably 100 or some years old. This was a giant feed store. It's now a hat store. These are the next steps going out to Los Angeles Street. And it's magnificent. You know, the only thing modern here is the exit sign and this metal door. But this is old marble steps. I love this stuff. And here we come out. It's just an old building that he's saying the only thing modern here, of course, is the lighting and there's nothing the, magnificent about it. It's, it's an old building. building. Yeah. It has marble stairs from back in the day. Fair enough. Okay. The marble stairs is kind of unique. That's cool. You have to you take know. an echoey video. Is it magnificent enough to take a video? Uh, where nobody can understand you. Catch what he says. You tell me if he's projecting any inner thoughts. You see the people working. So everyone down here selling stuff and being happy. It's great. Safe. I feel very safe here. Yeah. I feel well, very safe. Yeah. He goes, I feel very safe. Why say that? Did we think you were unsafe? It's like, I feel very safe because I can take care of myself. It's a, a, a neighborhood where like the average person might not feel safe, but he's saying, I feel very safe here because I can I take care of myself. But he's just saying, this is kind of a rough part of town, but I feel safe here because these are good people. You know? Yeah. Yeah, good- yeah. 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 Like, yeah now, you know, me and my wife just went to New York City and in the middle of Times Square and like like all the, the side streets, they have people set up selling their wares all over town like that. And I don't feel one way or another. It's just if you don't show any interest in their shit, they're not grabbing you and saying, buy my stuff. No. They're minding their own business. You're minding your own business until you present yourself as a potential customer. Sure. There's no reason to say anything. Yeah. He takes like off. I have to walk up all this thing for my parking <laughs> But this is he's like, I feel safe here, but he beats it to the left really quick. He goes <laughs> yeah. to his car. He goes to his car that's parked up the hill. <laughs> like, I feel safe, but I'm not going down there. Yeah. Now let's see what he has to say here. But why is he shirtless? Why do we have to see this shirtless Does, man on his bed? No, wait, doesn't he also have one where he's holding a guitar? We're getting to that one. We're getting to that okay. one. This is the first one. Okay. So just for our listeners, Frank's got a close up. For all we know, he's pantless too. Like, yeah. <laughs> Would you ever, as a 76 year old man, film yourself shirtless and, f- and put it on the internet for all this? I wouldn't even do it now, but I'm 49. Yeah, I wouldn't do it a 46 year old man. I'm, I'm not doing that. Dante, the best person you can have to sing the national anthem. So he's talking about Ashante, who I didn't know who this was. I had to Google her, but she's, I guess, a current pop star or R&B star. I'm not sure what genre she is, but I don't think she's, I don't think she's metal. I'll just say that. Much. But uh, so she sang the national anthem, one of these games. And of course, Frank has to say something about it. Listen to his commentary. Then we're going to listen to the, the performance. You tell me if it falls into that same category. None of them sing it correctly. They always have to add stuff. And she was really dressed for the occasion. Sony, like every person in the world is watching. I get what he's saying, but everyone's been doing that since you add your flourish to it when you're especially the r&b singers oh, of like course the, yeah they they always do so then he talks about how she was dressing so i was expecting her to be like boobing out essentially yeah. you know she didn't dress for the occasion apparently it's a baseball game this is not veterans day it's a baseball right game. right people are chewing tobacco in the pit the dug- oh, you think you could dress it up a little bit and maybe sing it like it should be sung Hey, Frank, go listen to Whitney Houston's Super Bowl National Anthem, which is 
widely regarded as one of the best versions ever. She does that too. I know. Look at his face here. It's such a condescending face too of like, yeah, why don't you sing it like it's supposed to be sung? In other words, why don't you sing it how I would sing it? <sighs> okay, so let's see how she's inappropriately dressed and how terrible she sings. Are you ready? Because I was ready for that. Maybe next time the Frank Stroll will sing it the right way. Oh, God. I didn't even see that part. But maybe next time the Frankster will sing it the right way. Oh, can you imagine the Franks are singing? I would buy tickets to any event in the yeah, world where yeah, he's going to And I'll leave right after the anthem. Yeah, I'm only here for the anthem. I'm going to buy Frank Stroll merch for the anthem. Now, with that, you're expecting a very inappropriate outfit, right? Or something like that with bad singing, according to his analysis, correct? Mm hmm. Okay. Here we go. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? I'm Canadian, but I know your anthem very well. Sounds pretty good to me. I haven't heard mm -hmm. anything bad or too over the top. And she's no. wearing a lovely faux fur type jacket with the Yankees uh, jersey underneath. Nothing yeah. inappropriate shown. So I'm like, what's he talking about? So, so far, her singing is fine. Her outfit's fine. There's nothing inappropriate. I, I think she looks great. Bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watched were so gallant. Streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting, and air gave oh, proof through the night not even not that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled then? So far, it's been 95% as sung. Yeah. Like, but this part at the end is always where they showcase. Every performer that's worth their salt can sing, will do something to showcase their ability. This is where they do it. So far, the parts, the rockets, red glare, bombs bursting in there, and this part leading up to the end are the main parts where singers take the most liberties yeah. and show their vocal range and everything. And she's doing it slightly, but she's also doing it well, Frank. I've heard some abortions of national anthems where people just just botch it completely. Hey, and careful so, some have been, this is a political yeah. climate word. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but some I mean, some of it has been mainstreamed recently. I think there was some hockey game a couple of months back where where this girl just completely blew the national anthem. How dare you? Them. Hockey national anthems are never <laughs> butchered. <laughs> yeah. That's so what do you think of her tight her tight jeans? What an inappropriate tight they're painted on but they're not sure. anything different than i see walking down the street every single day no, what does he want? no it's normal i don't know he wants, he wants to wear holding. a ball gown she she wants to enjoy the game after he wants to be comfortable yeah, exactly although i don't see how those pants would be comfortable but they're very tight on her but that's fine they're probably one of those elastic ones or the ones that are like yeah they look like jeans but maybe they're not yeah, really jeans those yeah. jeggings or whatever they call yeah. them <laughs> I think he's uh, choosing a weird hill to die on there. All right. So the next the next video clip we have here is, again, I guess it's the same day or next. I'm not sure. But he's shirtless again. But like Doug said, he, we've got a shirtless Frank with a guitar. So I thought when I saw this video on his Instagram after the uh, Shante debacle that he was going to show us how to sing <laughs> the uh, anthem. How it's done. Laying yeah. down. I could do it better laying down with my guitar. But all we get is some expose about something I can't remember now. But he just taps the guitar. It's a tease. You know those showgirls and those old-timey uh, strip shows where they have the feathers in front of their breasts, you know, mm -hmm. to tease their Yeah, breasts? yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Frank's version of that with the guitar covering his chest area. He's, he's teasing us here. All I got to say is, damn, damn Yankees. 
That was unbelievable. I'm sitting there with my guitar, my shirt off, watching the game. It couldn't be better. That's embarrassing. Did that need to be said? <laughs> well, for our audio listeners, it does. Is he laying there watching the game with his guitar across his chest and he waits for the game to be over and he's like, hmm, just picks up his phone and starts filming. Or is he sitting there watching the game and then he says, oh, I want to film my reaction to the game. Let me go grab my guitar. Let me lay down, put it across my chest. What is happening here? That's what the show is all about. Who is this guy? Why is he doing what he's doing? I don't know what the reasons would be for that. I don't know if he's completely sober. Nothing mm-hmm. wrong with having fun. Maybe he's got a couple in him. Who knows? Maybe he's just being silly. Regardless, he kept this post up. Not uh, everything needs to be broadcasted, though. I'm sitting here with my guitar and my shirt off. All right, Frank. (laughs) We could see that. He might have people with disabilities that listen to his Instagram, just so you know. Uh, And we have audio listeners to our show. So that's so thank you for that, Frank. At least our audio listeners knows what's going on. God bless. (laughs) Well, God bless you. So oh. this video here, he talks about the baseball game. It wasn't quite the win he wanted, but you'll notice he's got more lint. <laughs> <laughs> he also looks like he's wearing glasses, like with fake eyes painted on them. Yeah. But they, you, they do you notice them. the uh, the white lint? That the snow, like yeah. He's got, well, no, it's lint. The lint that's shaped like snowflakes on his. So he talks about the baseball, but of course, at the end of it, elections are coming up. He's getting a little bit nervous. Uh, what's more incredible is the stamina and the heart of these teams to to win, you know? And we want to win. So, early vote. Please get out and vote for Trump. I thought this was about baseball. The repercussions could last for decades. So go out and vote for President Trump. Early voting, if you can. I personally like to go in early and vote in person. I, I don't trust the mail system at this point, but we never know. God bless. God bless you, Frank. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. So two things. One, Frank is being filmed on a camera from 1998 webcam. It's weird. It's like potato filming. I'm not sure what's going on here, but he looks old there, too. Well, it might be because the filters are off on this. That's, That's why. Yeah. I mean, it's a uh, shitty camera. This is not a cell phone, right? It's a first generation iPhone camera. Yeah. It's audio and visually terrible. He's holding what the, the Trump make America fish again or whatever Trump fish mm. item. He's just holding this item. It's a real item. I forget what it's called, but I think this mm. product speaks for itself. But this toy, it's a fish with fish lips and the fish Trump hair, and it sings. And it, here we go. And he's presenting it to the camera. Hey, when you're 76 years old, this is the stuff that just makes you laugh, you know? The Trumpy Trump. I guess there's buttons on the back of it or whatever. That he, now, I think what happened here, if you'll notice his face, and our poor listeners, I'm sorry, I don't think he expected this thing to keep singing and playing as long as he did because he actually gets bored. <laughs> but he's like, oh, I, I've started this bit. I got to see it through. Watch. I'm the biggest Trump in the pod, and there is no bigger Trump than me, and probably never will be. Let's make fishing great again, okay? I don't just let any fish swim into my pod. They want to, but they're bad fish, criminals, and crazy fish. I'm closing the shoreline. No more fish in my pod. I'm the biggest shark ever seen. Let's go and make fishing great again. Mapco is the new mega. You can try to catch me, but it's hard, really hard. I don't eat just any worms. They have to be the great ones, the really great ones, that are shiny and nice, very nice. Only the great ones I plan to eat. That's he didn't know what to do. <laughs> anyway, is that hilarious? Is that funny? Do you want to own one of those, Doug? No, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. What? Okay. What does Trump have to do with fishing? Nothing, but the people uh, thought it'd be funny to make a Trump fish and sell that product. Frank is wearing a Trump shirt. You remember the band Super Tramp? Yeah, yes. <laughs> There's a famous cover of a Super Tramp album. Well, this shirt, it's called Super Trump. Mm-hmm. It's got Trump holding a tray of McDonald's food. They've used the Super Tramp album, calling it Super Trump. And here's Frank talking about Trump. Today is the day. Folks, listen up. The American people. You're too smart to be that dumb. <laughs> well, well 
not sure what that means. You're too smart to be that dumb. Okay. So again, mm -hmm. all right. All right. All right. Your future depends on this election. I think we got Pennsylvania and I think we got Michigan. Good, hard working people. They're getting it. The word's getting out. Joe Rogan help. Robert Kennedy help. Tulsi Cabbard help. Ryan and Doug's episode on be helped. <laughs> <laughs> we sure did. Why did he give us a plug? Come on, Frank. You got to admit, we helped. All these people are helping. Thank you. Madison Square Garden helped. Keep the faith. The Nazi rally helped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. Because <laughs> if not, we won't have a country. Oh. This is the dumbest woman I've ever seen in politics. She is clueless. She has not answered. She has not solved one thing. She has no plan. If she has no plan, you have no future. Remember that. You have no future. You think things are bad now? You think trying to get a house is bad now? You think the border is bad now? We are in the precipice of World War Three. Gee, I'm scared. Frank, stop. You're scared. Remember me. last time in that interview, he said she is the least qualified person in the That's world right. he's really driving it home but the things he says about Kamala is way worse than anything we've ever mm -hmm. said about frank let's be fair frank we're just taking the mick out of you but you're like literally calling somebody <laughs> stupid We've yeah, never we don't do that no that's ridiculous if you think israel's just going to sit back and let this keep going on you're crazy and if you think china's not going to try to move in in korea if she gets in power you're delusional so this is your last chance to save yourself, to save your country. And I'm not a crazy radical. I'm just a... I'm just a dealer celebrity riding on the coattails of my brother. Come right. on. That cares about my country. And you should care about your country. Okay? The blacks have had enough. The Latinos have had enough. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> Oh, no, it's always in his mind. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> but I love how the black, I don't know why it sounded so. I know. <laughs> the blacks. Oh, Jesus. He really hit that B hard. <laughs> that was a hard B, Frank. <laughs> 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 a soft A on the Asians. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that other race. We, we got the what's the other Latino, I got, I, Latinos. I got to think of all the races to make sure I got everyone covered. <laughs> I'm white. I'm not, I'm not getting nothing. You guys are gonna get nothing, okay? With with Kamala Harris, the brothers and the Latinos are getting it. Are we allowed to say that? I don't know what the rule is. <laughs> That's not your word, Frank. That's their word. I joke. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it's a lot. I don't even know anymore. I get so confused what I'm allowed to say. Yeah. <laughs> Frank's confusing me. Finally getting it. That nothing's going to happen for them. Nothing's going to change. We are all God's children. Aw. We are all Americans. Not Let's me. keep it that way. Go out. Get off your ass. Oh. And oh, yeah. vote. Yeah. If you don't vote, you don't have a damn thing to say. God bless you. God bless you all. This that was his, that was his powerful push. video to the people. That was his big his push. Yeah. push. There's long been this argument that if you don't vote, you don't have a right to bitch at who gets elected. Mm. Like, yeah, I can say whatever the fuck I want to whoever I want. That's true. Now, this is interesting. So just after he posted that, he actually posted a picture, Doug, about Philadelphia as a city, and he shat on it. This is oh. key. This is big. This is. Oh I hope you guys stuck around because this is a big one. We actually get a response from his brother on one of his posts. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's the post. He's showing, the, of course, the Rocky Steps that lead up to the Philadelphia Art Museum. This is what Frank had to say. I'll try to read this both as he re wrote it and, <laughs> and how he <laughs> means to write it. How dare the dishonest Democrats using our beloved Philadelphia Art Museum steps for the corrupt Kamala Harris campaign. These steps stood for the values that made their film Rocky relatable to the common, hardworking people of this country, giving hope to the downtrodden people without a voice. The film was about decency, goodness at heart. Kamala stands for none of it. She's a left-wing radical Marxist. I'm again so disappointed in the city of Philadelphia, which I loved, but no longer love or respect. Wow, that's a hard stance, Frank. That's a very hard stance. Oof. Now, Sly, his brother and creator of the Rocky franchise, and who has a big 
part to play in the all things Philly. Should he say uh, the views of my brother are of his and his alone and do not represent the Stolen family? Almost. Sly wrote this. He mistyped. I'm going to show it just for you, Doug. I'm going to show it that Sly did respond, but then Sly corrects himself because he was using the voice app on his phone and mis- okay. it misread his his voice a little bit. Right, right. So I pieced together what he meant to say on this next picture here for uh, narrative purposes. Okay. So this is what Sly wrote to Frank. He goes, I've got a news flash for you, Frank. They're actually putting a second statue at the top of the steps in about two months. Can you believe it? So there will be one statue at the bottom for people who find the steps too strenuous and another one at the top, just like it was in the movie. Oh, my God. It doesn't really address what Frank said about Philly. Yes, it is. Think about it. What he's saying is, is this city that you're crapping on is actually helping out the people. They're good to the people. They're putting up a second statue of my film franchise that you're crapping all over. You're talking about the film. You're talking about the city of Philly, and you don't respect or like it anymore. Sly came back and said, I think he's doing the OMG at the end there as of like, yeah. oh, they're so terrible, Frank. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that they're actually okay. putting a second statue up to help people that can't reach the top of the stairs. What a terrible, what a terrible uh, institution that this art museum is. I wish you would have been more direct. I got a new, a new slash you, Frank. I like the way it starts. Should have been like well, Philadelphia has done so much for me and the Rocky franchise. And, you know, well, that's what he's saying. So that was the correct edited version. But if you look at it again, he says here, I got a news flash for you, Frank. They're actually taking the second statue and putting it at the top of the steps. So, so Frank didn't take it down and he didn't reply to it either. There's no way Frank would take it down. He wouldn't piss off his brother that way. Mm hmm. Once I oh, post yeah, something, yeah. he can't take because people would notice, like, why'd you take it down, Frank? Right. So he has to keep it up, but he didn't respond or like it. So he just got bitch slapped by his brother. Yes. Yeah. And he's, he could do nothing but take it. This is a very telling part of the relationship. Is mm-hmm. Frank knows where the butter is breaded or the breaded is buttered or whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's very interesting. And, and the way you, you described it, like, I, I, I get it. I see where, uh, where, where Sly is kind of making his statement without, coming straight out and saying to Frank that like Philadelphia has done a lot for me. So you better shut your, your mouth. We should well, actually, we will hear a little bit of his victory speech here. We should just hear. Yeah. I want to hear one post uh, election. Yeah, one, you're right. You're right. Well, we got two of them. We got one where he's wearing the uh, 47 Trump swag hat. I think this uh, one also has lint on it as well. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> let's do it. Let's rock and roll. Okay. Let's, I think this is the let's... first video after he won Trump won. Well, folks, History was made tonight. I want to thank the state of Pennsylvania. I thought you were going to let us down, but you came through. Oh, nice. Save. After you, after you, you lost all respect for Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. Yeah, he retracted his words uh, there. It's like he's giving his victory speech. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. He said you let us down there. Like, all right. Man. He's like, thanks, thanks, Philly. And I want to thank all the support. Like, it's not your victory yeah. speech. I think this is Trump's to give, but I love how he's he's given it like it's his victory. I love it. I want to thank all the people <laughs> that have supported me on my many posts. On okay, see, <laughs> he really thinks he's the president. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what? If he ran for president, I would vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> your vote doesn't matter. <laughs> my vote does hey well if i don't have to show if i don't have to show my id i can just go no, that's there. that yeah that is true california can do that i think i don't in fact it's against yep. the law to, sh- to even ask to see the that's correct yep. that's crazy i will say that's pretty nuts i'm not gonna lie to you we show just so you know canadians have to show your id up here yeah as it should be president it is historical and you are all part of it oh doug you hear that Thanks, thank man. You, Frank. Thank, thank yeah. you. I did my thank part. You, I did my civic duty, Frank. That's right. I did mine as a Canadian by showcasing your show to the world. Yeah. <laughs> I am have not slept. I've been up the whole time. And I gotta tell you. What a warrior, eh? What fighting a, the good fight. Man, Sitting up he, watching TV. I went to bed. <laughs> I woke up the next day. <laughs> <laughs> like I went to bed knowing that Trump was going to win. Like I kind of saw the mm-hmm. tally, but I'm like, I, I got to go to bed. And I woke up for work yeah. that day, and I just I looked at my phone. Yeah, trust me, cool. And then I got my car that's and went a, to work. That's exactly <laughs> how it happened here at my house. I was sleeping. My wife got up for bed, and she whispered in my ear, "Trump won." And I went, <laughs> and I went back to sleep. 
<laughs> you go about your day. Life goes yep. on. I am so proud of President Trump. Oh, yeah. He is going to bring this country back. Oh, good. I know God saved him for a reason. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. This is where I don't care what side that if they said the same about Kamala, I'd say the same things. Just, just to be clear, I'm anti getting God mixed up with this crap. Sorry. And if you could be religious, that's fine. But again, there has to be somebody better. If God knows of his wisdom, could find somebody without any of the drama that people bring to the table. Why can't God do that? Mm-hmm. Why does he have to save people the last second? You know what I mean? It's almost like right. it's, it's almost like making God the braggart, so to speak. Like, look what God can do. God shouldn't do this for the clout, if that makes right. sense. Just, Why didn't just he intervene? It? before like not allow that guy to get roof access that kind of thing yeah well or just tell trump don't run for president you're a gong show mm-hmm. <laughs> like, right <laughs> that too <laughs> god save trump fair enough that's your belief like that's your belief that's fine god save trump cool that's the god that christians worship that he saved trump fair enough okay to save us divine intervention it's what this man went through it's a fantasy. He, he, so. he just he just cannot stop himself. Just get to the point, Frank, and just get rid of all the stuff that you said a billion times before. You've said it before. No need to rehash it every goddamn time you turn that camera on. Uh, Being called a Nazi, Hitler, court, everything. It's amazing. He is one of the toughest. I was talking to my brother tonight. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna beat me to it. <laughs> wow, you talking to you. which brother? What your half brother D- oh. D'Angelo or <laughs> which brother you talk to, Frank? Why don't you tell us who you're talking to? You know what's yeah. funny? He didn't mention Sly's name because Sly probably told him keep my name out of your freaking mouth. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like plausible deniability. I wasn't saying you, Sly. I do have other brothers. Mm-hmm. He has half brothers, right? So and I said he is the toughest man I have ever witnessed in my life. To- so you, what about again, all the what, boxers that you say are the greatest of all time? They're not tough? No, I think Tyson could beat up Trump in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be close. <laughs> now, what I love, though, is he didn't have to share the part where he told Sly that. Right. That was irrelevant. Because he right. just finished telling us, the audience, Trump is tough. I called Sly, and I said, Trump is the toughest guy. Okay. But he doesn't even tell us what size response was to that because, again, he was probably told Frank, you are to never speak for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On camera. I'm with you. I believe that like, too. If we talk, anything we talk about, whatever that thing is, you never say what I said. Maybe I could be wrong. I could be wrong. No, I, but like he, you know, in Sly's mind, Frank could burn himself to the ground, but don't take me with you. <laughs> Now, I know Frank has shared stories of their childhood and stuff. That's different. But yeah, modern day Sly stories. We don't hear anything from Frank regarding what's Sly thinking today. Right. You know, I, not, not that I'm aware of. Go through what he went through. And it was divine intervention. I'm so proud to wear this hat. Divine, Let's move okay. on. <laughs> Let's I'm sorry, move on, Frank. Okay. No, no, not you. I oh, mean, Frank, I'm sorry. From, from all the shit that he's been rehashing. Come on, man. It's boring now. Yeah, yeah. Doug's going to quit the show now. All right, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right so uh, Frank's wearing a 47 hat. That's what he's referring to, the 47 hat. Yeah, And it's gold. It's a gold numbering. I love it. I can't wait to go to Mar-a-Lago and congratulate the president and Vice President Vance. I think we're going to have a great administration. I think people are going to get back. I think people are going to start living again. It's going to be unbelievable. We're going to have a great administra- administration. You should all be proud. And the ones that voted for Trump, you should pat yourself on the back. The ones that didn't, I hate to say, you were fools. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Oh, oh fools and the incompetence oh. and everything. I love it. Boy, to the victor goes the spoils. Eh? <laughs> for all the you of you that didn't vote for Trump, you drive with a half tank of gas and your phone is at 10%. You lift leading liberal <laughs> fools. And you've been fooled. I can't <laughs> wait to see these people in Hollywood. These elites. I want to see their faces. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be the most hilarious thing in the world. I'm glad you're not petty, Frank. Be humble in victory. 
I know Sly is a Republican and he congratulated Trump. That's fine. But you would never hear Sly on his Instagram saying these things. No. You have to work with these people still. But Frank doesn't have to work with these people so he can say this. It's like, you know what? We were right. We were on the side of God. Oh, my gosh. Stop it. It's this kind of rhetoric that makes Republicans look the way they look. I mm-hmm. like. I get why they get the Christians they get. Stop doing that kind of talk. It is what it is. It's got nothing to do with God is what I'm saying. Like I said. Jesus is my savior. Trump is my president. God bless you all. And thank you all. Wow. He didn't know what to oh. do. He went, he went to kiss his fist. And then he was at the last minute <laughs> switching. But. We have a very, very happy Frank. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, Doug, the next time we get together. It'll be very interesting to see what we get out of Frank. His Instagram videos, how, how political they'll be. Do we get mm-hmm. more gym stories, testimonials, uh, and what have you. This was a big episode, but we had a lot to cover. Um, but I am curious when we get together in, in a month's time, approximately, what new grams, Instagrams, real yeah. food get, and what kind of I'd stories I'd like to see m- more like everyday life of Frank. Yeah. You know, that, well, this is I'm big. Gonna... This is big. Like, this yeah. is a big moment. Yeah. Like, we have mm-hmm. to admit, like, November was very leading up to the events of the election. And of course, the aftermath, it's on everyone's mind. I suspect by Christmas, we'll probably hear a little less, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting to see. This well, was a good okay. one. Though. This this was yeah, fun. We covered a lot. Big, yeah, this was a big episode. But like I said, these are probably going to be monthly, no more than twice a month, because A, we have to get content from Frank, and uh, B, there is a lot to talk about. So today is the beginning of a wonderful future. God bless. That concludes another episode of Frank Stallone. Who is this guy?